It is not for you. I have heard it over, and it is nothing, nothing in the world unless you can find sport in the intense, extremely stretched kind with cruel pain to. Do you service? You shall this twelve month term from day to day visit the speechless sick and still converse with groaning wretches, and your task shall be with all the fierce endeavor of your wit. To enforce the pain, impotent to smile, to more wild laughter in the throat of death, it cannot be. It is impossible. Mirth cannot move a soul in agony. Why? That's the way to choke a. Gibbing spirit whose influence is begot of that loose grace which shall low laughing here give to fools a jest's prosperity lies in the ear of him that hears it never in the tongue of him that. Makes it then, if sickly ears deaf with the clamours of their own clear groans, will hear your idols corns continue then. That is some satire keen and critical, not sorting with a nuptial ceremony. Some say. Good will, which I in sport do sing, hadst thou not played some kingly parts in sport, thou hadst been companion for a king and been a king among the meaner sort. Some others rail, but. Rail as they think fit. Thou hast no railing but a reigning wit and honesty. Thou sowest which they do reap, so to increase their stock which they do keep, knowing nothing more commendable for a. Man's recreation than mirth, which is used in an honest fashion. If by your art, my dearest father, you have put the wild waters in this roar, allay them thus with imagined wing. Our swift scene flies in motion of no less celerity than that of thought. Why is my verse so barren of new pride, so far from variation or quick change? Why, with thee, do I not? Glance aside to newfound methods and to compound strange. Why write I still at one ever the same and keep invention in a noted weed that every word doth almost tell my name, showing their birth. And where they did proceed, stoop boys, this 
gate instructs you how to utter the heavens and bows you to a morning's holy office. The gates of monarchs are arched so high that giants may jet through and keep their impious turbans on without good marrow to the sun. The isle is full of noises, sounds and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand wangling instruments will hum about mine ears and sometimes voices that if I had then waked after long sleep will make me sleep again and then in dreaming the clouds me thought would open and show riches ready to drop upon me that I waked I cried to dream again if we shadows have offended think but this and all is mended that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear and this weak and idle theme no more yielding but the dream all oh, the story of the night told over and all oh, the minds transfigured so together more witnessed than fancies images and groans to something of great constancy our revels now are ended these our actors as i foretold you were all spirits and are melted into air into thin air and like the baseless fabric of this vision the cloud cap towers the gorgeous palaces the solemn temples the great globe itself yeah all which it inherit shall dissolve and like this insubstantial pageant faded leave not a rack behind we are such stuff as dreams are made on and our little life is rounded with a sleep graves at my command have waked the sleepers up and let em forth be my so potent art now my charms are all overthrown and what strength i have mine own which is most faint now tis true i must be here confined by you or sent to naples let me not since i have my dukedom got and pardoned the deceiver dwell in this bare island by your spell but release me from my bonds with the help of your good hands gentle breath of yours my sails must fill or else my project fails which was to please now i want spirits to enforce art to enchant and my 
ending is despair unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all faults as you from crimes would pardon be. Let your indulgence set me free. Our wooing doth not end like an old play. Jack hath not jewel. These ladies' quarters in might well have made our sport a comedy. What is our life a play of passion, our mirth, the music of division, our mother's wombs, the tiring houses be where we are dressed for this short comedy heaven the judicious sharp spectator is that sits and marks who doth act amiss our graves that hide us from the searching sun are like drawn curtains when the play is done Thus march we, playing to our latest rest. Only we die in earnest, that's no jest. I hold the world, but as the world gratiano a stage, where every man must play a part and mine a sad one life's but a walking shadow a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more all the world's a stage and all the Men and women merely players, they have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. Thou art a villain, you are a senator, and what's he then that says I play the villain when this advice is free I give and honest divinity of hell when devils will the blackest sins put on they do suggest at first with heavenly shows as I do now, I will be hanged if some eternal villain, some busy and insinuating rogue, some cogging, cozening slave to get some office have not devised this slander. I'll be hanged, else fie the is no such man it is impossible i look down towards his feet but that's a fable if that thou beest a devil i cannot kill thee if i do fain oh let me in my present wildness thy and never live to show the incredulous world the noble change that i have purposed and i do wish your honours may increase till you do live 
to see a son of mine offend you and obey you as I did, so shall I live to speak my father's word. My father is gone wild into his grave, for in his tomb lie my affections, and with his spirit sadly I survive to mock the expectation of the world to frustrate prophecies and to raise out rotten opinion who hath writ me down after my seeming presume not that I am the thing I was for God doth know so shall the worlds perceive that I have turned away my former self, so will I those that kept me company when thou dost. Here I am as I have been. Approach me, and thou shalt be as thou wast so oft it chances in particular men that for some vicious mole of nature in them as in the birth wherein they are not guilty since nature cannot choose his origin by their overgrowth of some complexion oft breaking down the pales and forts of reason or by some habit that too much overleavens the form of plausive manners that these men carrying I say the stamp of one defect being nature's livery or fortune star his virtues else be they as pure as grace as infinite as man may undergo shall in the general censure take corruption from that particular fault the dream of evil doth all the noble substance often doubt to his own scandal i know my bodies of so fragile a kind as force without fevers within can kill i know the heavenly nature of my mind but tis corrupted both in wit and will i know my soul hath power to know all things to know all things yet she is blind and ignorant in all i know i am one of nature's little kings yet to the least and vilest things am thrall i know my life's a pain and but a span i know my sense is mocked with everything and to conclude i know myself a man which is a proud and yet a wretched thing to my shame i see the imminent death of twenty thousand men that for 
a fantasy and trick of fame go to the graves like beds fight for a plot where on the numbers cannot try the cause which is not tomb enough or continent to hide the slain tis not alone my inky cloak good mother nor customary suits of solemn black nor windy suspiration are forced breath no nor the fruitful river in the eye nor the dejected heavier of the visage together with all forms moods shapes of grief that can denote me truly these indeed seem for they are actions that a man might play but i have that within which passes show o oh god horatio what a wondered name things standing thus unknown shall i leave behind me if thou didst ever hold me in thy heart absent thee from felicity our while and in this harsh world draw thy breath in pain to tell my story you that look pale and tremble at this chance that are but mutes or audience to this art had i but time oh i could tell you but let it be horatio i am dead thou livest report me and my cause are right to the unsatisfied beseeching god the hearers that thereby shall be touched may rather amend their faults than therewith be grieved come you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe top full of direst cruelty make thick my blood stop up the access and passage to remorse that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose nor keep peace between the effect and it come to my woman's breasts and take my milk for gal you murdering ministers wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief come thick night and pour thee in the dunnest smoke of hell that my keen knife see not the wound it makes nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry hold hold will plead like angels trumpet tongued against the deep damnation of this taking of ants pity like a naked newborn babe striding the blast or heaven's cherubins horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air shall blow the hoary deed 
in every eye that tears shall drown the wind thou sure and firm set earth hear not my steps which way they walk for fear thy very stones prate off my whereabout had i but died an hour before this chance i had lived a blessed time for from this instant there's nothing serious in mortality all is but toys renown and grace is dead the wine of life is dawn and the mere lees is left this vault to brag of infected by the air whereon they ride and damned all those that trust them bleed bleed poor country great tyranny lay thou thy basis sure for goodness dare not check thee angels are bright still though the brightest fell though all things foul would wear the brows of grace yet grace must still look so pour the sweet milk of concord into hell uproar the universal peace confound all unity on earth with this strange virtue he hath a heavenly gift of prophecy and sundry blessings hang about his throne that speak him full of grace did heaven look on and would not take their part sinful mucked of they were all struck for thee despair thy charm and let the angel whom thou still hast served tell thee Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped our play leaps o'er the vaunt and firstlings of those broils beginning in the middle starting thence our way to what may be digested in a play pardon gentles all the flat unraised spirits that hath dared on this unworthy scuffle to bring forth so great an object can this cockpit hold the vasty fields of france or may we cram within this wooden o oh, the very casks that did affright the air at aging court o oh, pardon since a crooked figure may attest in little place a million and let us ciphers to this great account on your imaginary forces work though needs make many poets and some such as art and nature have not bettered much yet ours for want hath not so loved the stage as he dare serve the ill customs of the age or purchase your delight at such a rate as for it 
he himself must justly hate to make a child now swaddle to proceed man and then shoot up in one beard and weed past three score years or with the rusty swords and help of some few foot and half foot words fight over york and lancaster's long jars and in the tiring house bring wounds to scars and so our scene must to the battle fly where oh for pity we shall much disgrace with four or five most vile and ragged foils right ill disposed in brawl ridiculous the name of agincourt yet sit and see minding true things by what their mockeries be gods is the quarrel for gods substitute his deputy anointed in his sight hath caused his death the which if wrongfully let heaven revenge for i may never lift an angry arm against his minister this land of dear souls this dear land dear for her reputation though the world is now least out i die pronouncing it like to a tenement or pelting farm that england that was wont to conquer others hath made a shameful conquest of itself not all the water in the rough rude sea can wash the balm off from an anointed king the breath of worldly men cannot depose deputy elected by the lord within the hollow crown that rounds the mortal temples of a king keeps death his court and there the antic sits scoffing his state and grinning at his pomp allowing him a breath a little scene to monarchize be feared and kill with looks their fortunes both are weighed in your lord's scale is nothing but himself and some few vanities that make him light but in the balance of great bowling broke besides himself are all the english peers and with that odds he weighs king richard down doubly divorced bad man you violate a twofold marriage twixt my crown and me and then betwixt me and my married wife degree being visited the unworthiest chose us fairly in the mask the heavens themselves the planets and this centre observe degree priority and place dancing bright lady then began to be when the first seeds whereof the world did spring the 
fire, air, earth, and water did agree by love's persuasion, nature's mighty king, to leave the first disordered combating and in a dawn's such measure to observe as all the world their motion should preserve since when they are still carried in a round and changing come one in another's place yet do they neither mingle nor confound but every one doth keep the bounded space wherein the dance doth bid it turn or trace this wondrous miracle did love devise for dancing is love's proper exercise nativity once in the main of light crawls to maturity wherewith being crowned crooked eclipses gainst his glory fight and time that gave doth now his gift confound time doth transfix the flourish set on youth and delves the parallels in beauty's brow feeds on the rarities of nature's truth and nothing stands but for his scythe to mow second childishness and mere oblivion sans teeth sans eyes sans taste sans everything dost thou call me fool boy all thy other titles thou hast given away that thou wast born with here nature here dear goddess here suspend thy purpose if thou didst intend to make this creature fruitful this is no flattery these are counsellors that feelingly persuade me what i am who with roaring voices strike in the numbed and mortified bare arms pins wooden pricks nails sprigs of rosemary and with this horrible object from low farms poor pelting villagers sheep coats and mills sometime with lunatic bands sometime with prayers enforce their charity allow not nature more than nature needs man's life is cheap as beasts and thou all shaking thunder strike flat the thick rotundity of the world crack nature's moulds all germans spill at once that makes ingrateful man an aged man is but a paltry thing a tattered coat upon a stick unless soul clap its hands and sing and louder sing for every tatter in its mortal dress when cut purses come not to throngs then shall the realm of albion come to great confession take physic pomp expose they self to feel what wretches feel that thou mayest shake the superflux to them and show the heavens more just worse 
I may be, yet the worst is not so long as we can say this is the worst humanity must perforce prey on itself like monsters of the deep O oh, ruined peace of nature this great world shall so wear out to naught men must endure their going hence even as the coming hither ripeness is all the oldest hath born most we that are young shall never see so much nor live so long nature never lends the smallest scruple of her excellence but like a thriftly goddess she determines herself the glory of a creditor both thanks and use that old and antique song we heard last night methought it did relieve my passion much more than light as and recollected terms of these most brisk and giddy paced times mark it cesario it is old and plain the spinsters and the knitters in the sun and the free maids that weave their thread with bones do use to chant it it is silly sooth and dull is with the innocence of love like the old age when my old wife lived upon this day she was both pantler butler cook both dame and servant welcomed all served all would sing her song and dance her turn now here at upper end of the table now in the middle on his shoulder and his her face of fire with labour and the thing she took to quench it she would to each one sip the guilty goddess of my harmful deeds that did not better for my life provide than public means which public manners breeds thence comes it that my name receives a brand and almost thence my nature is subdued to what it works in like the dyer's hand man proud man dressed in a little brief authority most ignorant of what he is most assured his glassy essence like an angry ape plays such fantastic tricks before high heaven as makes the angels weep when all allowed the wind doth blow and coughing drowns the parson's saw and birds sit brooding in the snow and marian's nose looks red and raw when roasted crabs hiss in the bowl then nightly sings 
the staring owl to with to who a merry note while greasy joan doth keel the pot are you my wife and will not call me husband my men should call me lord i am your good man whoever bound him i will loose his bonds and gain a husband by his liberty that god forbid that made me first your slave i should in thought control your times of pleasure or at your hand the account of hours to crave being your vassal bound to stay your leisure oh let me suffer being at your beck the imprisoned absence of your liberty and patience tame to sufferance bide each check without accusing you of injury be where you list your charter is so strong that you yourself may privilege your time to what you will to you it doth belong yourself to pardon of self-doing crime i am to wait though waiting so be hell not blame your pleasure be it ill or well who is sylvia what is she that all our swains command her holy fair and wise is she the heaven such grace did lend her that she might admired be if not divine yet let her be a principality sovereign to all the creatures on the earth at first i did adore a twinkling star but now i worship a celestial sun teach me dear creature how to think and speak lay open to my earthly gross conceit the folded meaning of your words deceit are you a god would you create me new transport me then and to your power i'll yield while idly i stood looking on i found the effect of love in idleness thou thou lies under thou hast given her rhymes interchange love tokens with my child thou hast by moonlight at her window sung with feigning voice verses of feigning love and stolen the impression of her fantasy with bracelets of thy hair rings gourds conceits knacks trifles nosegays sweetmeats messengers of strong prevailment in unhardened youth with cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart oh she knew well thy love did read by wrote that could not spell you would have married her most shamefully where the 
was no proportion held in love. The truth is she and I long since contracted and now so sure that nothing can dissolve us. Therein she does evitate and shun a thousand irreligious cursed hours which forced marriage could have brought upon her. You must begin, will you, Orlando, go to will you, Orlando, have to wife this Rosalind, I will a but when why now as fast as she can marry us then you must say i take the rosalind for wife i take the rosalind for wife i might ask you for your commission but i to take the Orlando for my husband, a friend for to defend you from sorrow, care and smart in health and sickness for thy comfort day and night. He is approved and brought whose love and liking is most constant sure and right then love him as ye ought there is no treasure which may be compared unto a faithful friend gold soon decayeth and worldly wealth consumeth and wasteth in the wind but love once planted in a pure and perfect mind endureth weal and woe the frowns of fortune come they ne'er so unkind cannot the same overthrow